Hi guys, Matt Stark with Bass Fishing Basics. We're in the middle of fall transition and the textbooks say the bass should be migrating into the backs of the coves and, and, and following the herring and, and shad into the backs of the creeks. Uh, so we're going to begin our search there. Uh, into the backs of some of these coves, we're going to be looking for warmer water, we're going to be looking for bait fish activity. Uh, if we find the bait fish activity, theoretically we, we, we should find some bass. Now this particular lake is dominated by a lot of milfoil growth. And unfortunately with the colder water temperatures, uh, a lot of that milfoil growth is dying off. That dying milfoil actually depletes the water of oxygen. So we're gonna be going into these coves. The other thing we're gonna be looking for aside from bait fish activity is just healthy grass. If we can find a combination of healthy grass and uh, bait fish activity, we should find fish. So it was kind of a crazy fall day. Um, we ended up having a little bit of uh, sun and clouds followed by some rain and some more sun and clouds and we had some wind and you know, typical fall weather. Um, we did start out shallow. We, um, we first started searching on a, on a giant weed flat. Um, we started searching the shallow areas where we were graphing some fish. And we used uh, two different search baits when we did that. We were dealing with a lot of milfoil growth, so we wanted uh, search baits that would go over the weeds and wouldn't get hung up. So, used two different things. This is a riot bait streaker swim bait, and the thing I love about it is solid body construction, uh, which allows it to be cast a mile. It gives it a lot of durability too, so you're not changing baits every time you catch a fish. But it's got a ribbed tail, and this ribbed tail um, was really, really useful. Um, for the presentation that I was using, which is essentially reeling it fast and then killing it over little gaps in the weeds. And when you killed it, um, this tail still had a nice flutter um, and basically resembled the dying bait fish. Uh, this one's rigged on a belly weighted Gamagatsu uh, uh, swim bait hook. It's got a screw lock that goes into the head um, and it allows that swim bait hook to be uh, text posed in there so it's completely weedless. Um, fantastic search bait this time of year. And then the other uh, bait that we use, this is the RS1 spinner bait from, uh, from Riot Baits. And uh, you know, shad colored, this is called the chrome sultry shad uh, because of the chrome head. Uh, double willow leaf configuration. And the reason I chose the double willow leaf configuration is so it just goes through the weeds uh, a little easier. This is a half ounce model. Um, but uh, you know any any type of spinner bait that you use, double willow leaf configuration in the weeds is is uh, a really good option there. What we found when we were searching for those fish shallow is that there just wasn't a lot of big ones in those areas. I mean, we were catching one and a half pound hammer handles, um, you know, all day on these, and we we're catching some pickerel. But you know that was the extent of it. Um, even when we slowed down and started flipping, we just didn't we didn't get those big bites. Um, now there's not a lot of big fish in the area that we're fishing, period. But um, we did find better quality fish out on the, the weedy um, points, the, the primary points that led into the back of these coves. Um, essentially what we did is we just kind of backtracked. We worked backwards from the shallow area out deep. Um, once we got out deep and we kind of found fish, we slowed down and that's where we got our better bites. This is hands down my favorite bait in the world. And, and I'll say that this is the best beaver on the market. This is the Riot Baits Fuzzy Beaver. And if you haven't used it, I mean, it's, it, you should definitely give it a look. It's made with a buoyant plastic. Um, so unlike the salted counterparts, when this bait goes down, it has a tendency to stand up in a defensive posture um, much like a natural crawfish, and that's unlike other beavers. The other thing I love about this is when it falls, there's a subtle flutter to the uh, claws themselves, and, and most beavers, the, the claws don't actually do anything. This has a ridge on the upper end of this claw, and then on the bottom of this one. So they actually flutter in alternating directions. So that's another unique quality of the fuzzy beaver. But anyway, it was a killer today. We were flipping it in about eight feet, um, into the weeds again on the points leading into these coves and that's where we got a lot of our bigger bites. Now I had the fuzzy beaver uh, rigged on a 5 16ths ounce T3 tungsten um, worm weight that's also by Riot. It was pegged with a little bobber stop on 16 pound 
gamma edge fluorocarbon on 20 pound gamma torque braid. Um, super strong line guys if you haven't used, utilized it. Um, it's good stuff. I had that fuzzy beaver rigged on a uh, my workhorse which is the loose tournament speed spool. This one's in a 6-4 to 1 gear ratio. You can see this reel has been well loved and I have it uh, mounted on top of my uh, this is a ducket micro magic uh, medium heavy flipping stick uh, and it's seven six in length uh, great setup super light you can flip all day with this setup and not get tired so the next time you're out looking uh, looking for bass in the fall remember some of these tactics and hopefully they'll catch help you catch more fish I'm Matt with Bass Fishing Basics we'll see you next time